Hey everyone, in this video today we're looking at the Think Diag 2 by ThinkCar. This particular one is an OBD reader. It is headless, so compared to another one that I've bought before which has a screen, this does not have a screen. It does have these manuals. It does come with the appropriate cable that plugs into the OBD port of the car. Plugs right in here also. Here's that cable. The manual is pretty easy to read. It does show all the different steps that you need to do from setting it up on the phone. I also want to note that you do have to have a separate account for this and link the activation code onto that account. So that's another thing to consider as you're buying this product. Here's what the app looks like after download. If you do tap on any one of the features, it does ask you to sign in and go through the activation process. Before activating, I'm plugging this into my car. You can see the three lights are on here. I've created an account, signed in, and I have to go through the activation process now. So I tap on activate here, and it asks for the serial number and activation code, which are on the manual. Now the activation is complete. Time to tap download here to update to the latest software. After activation, tap the top right connection button. It looks like a Bluetooth icon. And now it's going to try to connect to this ThinkDiag2. Turn the car on, and now it's finally time to diagnose. I tapped OBD functions in the prior menu, and now I am reading through the scan results. So check engine light is off. There are no codes in the computer. There are eight readiness monitors completed, which is good. There are zero knots completed. That's also good. This is just a high level menu. So when I try to tap on these different items, it doesn't show me anything further. So you have to click OK and go further. After tapping on OK, we're greeted with another menu. Now we have the ability to read the different variables, read the emissions, and read the fault codes. Right now, we are looking at the emissions monitor status. It shows all the different monitors that are complete, not complete, or not supported. If we tap the reports button here, we get a report of the emissions monitor status that we just saw. Let's say I want to dig deeper into a car. I can tap on read data stream, and it shows all the different variables that one can possibly read out through this scanner. So I'm just going to tap on a handful of these just to show different statuses. So like engine RPM is here, code stored, load value, engine coolant temperature. Those are all things that I've just tapped on that are shown here. Of course, as things change in the vehicle, these things change dynamically as well. So see the engine is on in the car. You can see the RPMs, you can see the coolant temperature and all these other things. There is onboard monitoring, which checks exhaust gas sensor. Also tap through control operation module information. They didn't really give me anything that was valuable to me. So I'm just going to skip over these quickly. The maintenance functions menu is the next one we're going to go through. This is probably why people want to buy this device, mainly because beyond the fact that it can read through engine type stuff, when we click through things like oil or TPMS, you can get some sensor level data for these particular things. Of course, I'm going to walk you through some of the pitfalls that I see and the good things as we walk through this application. So upon tapping on that oil one, we get a lot of these different things. Let's start at the function introduction, just because I'm curious what this means. Okay, so it does service lamp reset. If it is on, you're able to turn it back off. That is pretty cool. So now let's scroll down to the Toyota because that's what I'm in right now. switch on ignition the ignition is on so there's a manual reset here so if i click manual reset and then go into oh i have a fourth generation so it's not going to be here all this does is tell me the steps that i need to take to actually reset it but i wonder what if i have like a different vehicle where i need like an auto reset oh they don't have maserati i was hoping there would be maserati in here so I could use it to my other car, but they don't. So let's say we do like Lamborghini. Uh, don't, I don't want to do that because I don't have a Lamborghini. I don't want to mess anything up. So I was hoping for an automatic reset function. It didn't look like it was supported for Toyota and I had a fourth generation Prius, which is not supported by this software. I was also looking for Maserati because you have to reset it using a scanner. Unfortunately, this does not have the Maserati support. Next, I'm going into the immobilizer function, which is codenamed IMMO in this software. So when you tap on that, we get a list of makes once again. So I'm going to scroll all the way back down to Toyota. And then we'll take a look at what this thing can do. Now, unfortunately for me, I don't have a key that I can program at this point. But 
I just want to see what this can actually do. So I see we have here immobilizer programming, main body, theft deterrent, and smart key programming. All cool features. There's also a manual portion of it, which I'm guessing is going to just tell us exactly how to do it. Which, once again, see here, we get all the instructions on how to do this manually. So now I'm in the TPMS section for Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Let's see what this can do. So under Toyota, we get these three different things. I'm going to tap on Signal Check and see what happens. So for the first time, I've seen my TPMS light on and it's blinking. Back here, it has processed the signal check. The hope is that the TPMS light goes away, which means everything is working as it should. And now it's communicating back to the car. And when I go back to look at the TPMS light, it is gone. After that, I went to BMS and saw engine, hybrid, and HV battery. What I was hoping is you can read the HV battery, but unfortunately, we were unable to do that, and we're unable to look at the hybrid control and engine settings from here. I was hoping at least to see some sort of voltage and also the voltage of the individual cells, but it looks like it was not supported. Lastly, we're checking out the all system diagnostic, which allows for VIN this, scan. So just do a using VIN the scan computer, we can check the up. VIN of this car actually matches, of course, what's probably in the glass or other parts of the body. While in this diagnostic section, there is a lot more makes or vehicle makes that you can see here. So for example, my other car is a Maserati, so I tapped on that right away just to see what the capability is because it was surprising to me that it shows up in the automatic diagnostic section, but not the OBD function and the other section that was right in the top menu there. Meanwhile, if we continue with auto-diagnosing the Toyota, we get like 16 pin, 17 pin, and other stuff, which I'm going to admit I have no idea about. So I'm just going to tap through this kind of aimlessly and hope for the best. So I'm going to tap here on 17 pin Toyota. We get engine, SRS, ABS, air suspension, etc., which is pretty decent. If we tap on DTC info, we're hoping to read back some code. So it is communicating with the computer now. And using this automatic scanner, I just wish that they had a bit more instruction about how exactly it's used and what the output should look like. Because here there's like symbols and stuff that I don't really understand. And after playing with the all systems diagnostic, we get this Christmas tree of lights like the steering wheel, the airbag, and the TPMS lights. So that looks like something that I don't want to touch again unless I know exactly what I'm doing. Next, I tap back into OBD functions in hopes that the Christmas tree will go away. And after I did that, the Christmas tree of lights on the dashboard went away. So it looks like for me, since I'm not as scaled in this software, I'm just going to stick in the reports, scan results, everything but the auto diagnostic. But that's it. Just wanted to show you this is how the ThinkCard ThinkDiag2 works. Maintenance, OBD functions, reports, etc. Thank you very much for watching.